out here hiking this morning, walked back to this uh, little cabin thing back here that's available for hikers. Wanted to read some scripture here this morning. Interesting subject to talk about. But of the times and the seasons, First Timothy or First Thessalonians chapter five, verse one. But of the times and the, and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Somebody's going to be escaping some things in the future. Hmm. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Interesting little scripture there for today, because um, I didn't sleep very good last night. And uh, the night before, I didn't sleep very good either. And uh, the night before that, not so good either. And I've been getting different brethren and they talk about this. And different people say, you know, it's kind of weird, but uh, I don't know what's going on, but for a couple of days, I'm just waking up in the middle of the night, I'm wide awake and what is this? You know, I'm not eating anything strange and what's going on? Well, I have some theories on that. And uh, the fact is, I think that there's some real major spiritual stuff going on right now. And I think that we're feeling that. And um, you know, I've struggled with this thing for many years now, uh, where just out of the blue for no reason at all, um, I just wake up right in the middle of the night, or I don't sleep good or whatever else. And there's been times I've been sawing and splitting firewood all day, you know, lots of physical activity, hiking, like we do. I mean, we live a pretty active life and no sleep. You know, I know the Bible says that the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Well, usually, but um, we're not living in the, in times that are just kind of, yeah, it's always been this way or whatever else. You can probably see the river right there, probably hear it as well. But uh, we're not living in just normal times. A lot of people make that mistake of thinking that way. They think it's just, oh, it's, always, it's been like this before, it's been bad before, or whatever else. Um, no, not like this. We are entering a time that is going to see more people dying and more terror than any time in history. So it would behoove you uh, saved or lost out there, but especially the saved, um, if you are part of a movement or doing something that is, does not have much history to it, uh, you have some kind of belief system or whatever else that's pretty much brand new, it just showed up in the last 40, 50 years, um, examine yourself, <laughs> uh, whether you be in the faith. Uh, that's very important, but even just from a common sense perspective, if you just have something that you're doing now that's just modern and people didn't do it in the past, well, there's a pretty good chance it's part of the Antichrist system. Is he give me some examples? Okay. Uh, right now, I have absolutely no communication device on me at all. Okay, this is a camera. It's not a smartphone. Um, I don't particularly like being tracked like an animal. I come out here. They don't even work out here that great either, but uh, you know, if I come out here, I don't need to talk to anybody. And I'll tell you a little story here, which I've never said before in any of my videos. Um, I'll tell you how weird I am. Uh, I've never liked phones, telephones. Born in 1975, yesterday was my birthday, and I'm 49 years old now, almost 50. I'm over the hill, <laughs> but uh, I remember growing up, and back then we had the, the dial, you know, telephones, we didn't even have the buttons. So I saw somebody who had buttons the first time, and I thought, wow, it's high tech. You know, we had the dial thing, like that. You know, you have to let it come back each time. And sometimes if you mess up, you wouldn't let it go back the whole way, you know, and, and you'd get somebody and 
hello hello is this so-and-so's house no you got the wrong, the wrong number buddy you know I guess there's not a whole lot of that anymore with all the smartphone stuff and whatever but I remember distinctly growing up that uh, I was not into the thing of telephones and phone conversations and whatever and I was the one that you know and Brian the phone's for you you know and I'd come downstairs or whatever and I'd take the phone and I'd stretch the cord as far as I could into another room or something shut the door and be in there you know talking on the phone and and somebody would think I was off the phone and they'd pick up the phone and and say I'm on the phone you know and it was always this real embarrassing thing you know and and uh I've always been a very private person and that's why I don't I don't relate to this thing of just walking around through the store hey yeah I'm out here hey how you doing how's your wife doing anyhow blah 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 I don't understand that uh you know again a lot of people um in the past they were very paranoid about talking on the phone if you want to do an interesting study you can actually check out some of the old uh propaganda stuff that they were bringing out to try to get people to warm up to the idea of talking about personal business over the telephone because people way back even before i was born people had a thing about you know i'm not going to just talk about family issues or whatever because the operator would be listening you know she's there plugging the different things in and whatever else she can hear the conversation and of course you know there was some stuff about uh you know operators were encouraged to report crimes or report things if they heard anything and whatever so but they you know a lot of people had to get past that thing of of uh talking on the phone <sighs> Got a tree down here walk out around it covering the trail but um that's the generation i'm from and so the concept of always having a phone on me um i don't like telephones that's how weird and backward I am. And um, so it's not really much of a temptation. You know, well, what are you going to do if your vehicle breaks down there? You know, you're miles away from anything right now. Yes, I am. But you know what I'm doing? You see down here, my legs are moving. See that? So I put my feet out like, like this. That's called uh, walking. That's a new concept to some people, I guess. Um, and I've had vehicle breakdown issues up here in the middle of nowhere, and I've had to walk uh, several miles sometimes, and I get back after dark. Uh, oh well. I had a good day of physical fitness. That's the way I look at it. Oh, you can't do this. This is just terrible. What about your wife and son? They like it. They like to walk. Uh, so... But getting back to the original thought of the video here. Um, new things, new technologies. If you understand the scriptures, you have to look and you have to say, I wonder if it would be part of the Antichrist system to be able to track people. Warm them up to the idea of having something in their, a GPS locator in their back pocket that can track and trace them. I wonder. No man might buy or sell save he that had the mark. He's saying smartphones are the mark of the beast. No, I didn't say that. They are an early technology leading to the mark of the beast. They are to break your, down your sense of privacy. And, uh, you know, just be daring a little bit. Go out and go for a walk someplace or go someplace without your smartphone. Okay? Live on the wild side, okay? <laughs> um... So that's one thing. Um, another thing, uh, pokes in the shoulder given by people with white robes. Um, that sounds really weird when you think about it that way. But uh, is that part of end time stuff? Well, it's only uh, back in the mid 19th century that Bruce Jenner, I think his name was, came up with the concept of inoculation. And at first they had it that you would be cut, they'd cut your arm and smear some cow pus in there and 
wrap it up with galls and then see if you get sick and create the antibodies and all the other stuff there. Um, oops. Trail's messed up again here. Right there's the trail. So let me think here. I don't have to navigate around this. Oh, just so terrible, isn't it? I should probably have GPS. Literally saw a thing speaking back, kicking the smartphones again. Um, since most of you are watching me on the smartphone right now. <laughs> I'm just trying to get you to think. I'm not persecuting you. But uh, I saw a thing that there was some older woman who was hiking the Appalachian Trail and uh, doing it all by herself. Not a good idea if you're in your 60s whatever, unless you're very uh, highly advanced, you know what you're doing. But she was hiking along and um, had to go to the bathroom and she wanted to go off the trails, you know, for privacy's sake, whatever. So she walked off the trail, did what needed to be done, and then she couldn't find her way back to the trail. And uh, she got out her smartphone and she started to text her husband you know, like that's going to do something. And um, and so she's there texting her, her husband and uh, she couldn't, it wouldn't send. She couldn't get good reception. So instead of going down, you know, down the hill, find a river, you follow the river down and you'll come to a town. All right, instead of doing that, what she did is she kept going higher, away from the trail, higher up to try to get cell phone reception. And what happened? They found her dead about two years after that uh, she died. Never came home. They just pronounced, well, she's missing, I guess. And, and eventually, yeah, she was dead. All because she was trusting in her smartphone and not in uh, a compass. Um, not too smart. You know, kind of funny that her smartphone got her killed. But, uh, you know, getting back to the whole thing, the idea, the concept of having things injected into you when you're healthy so that you don't get sick. Um, is that going to lead to something in the future? Possibly a mark in the right hand or in the forehead? And you have to get people warmed up to the idea of having things injected into them? Hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, br brother, I have to um, have my special injections every year because if I don't, I could get sick. Well, that's kind of interesting because I've known plenty of people that get the injections and they get sick. That's the point of the injections, to make you sick. Um, technically, inject the uh, you know, thing into you and then it's supposed to build antibodies. Uh, problem is it doesn't always work that way but um, that's another one that you need to be careful about um, I'll tell you another one and that is debt and I I rip on debt quite a bit because you know what I see a lot of people that are dying they're drowning in debt we were driving the other day and uh, going to the grocery store and we were talking about you know we'd see people they go up to the counter to pay for their groceries and they're using um, buy now, pay later loans. And they're using cell phones and whatever to pay for their groceries. And we just thought to ourselves, that's pretty bad. And my wife, we're leaving the grocery store and she said, you know, it's a pretty bad thing when somebody can't even afford to exist. And without finance, you know, financing things. I just thought, okay, that's a new thought. There are people right now that cannot afford clothing, housing, vehicle, uh, food, food on their, in, in their stomach, clothes on their back, having food and raiment, let us be there with content. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter six, they can't afford it. They have to do it through financing. They have to borrow money. That's a thought. Uh, is that a problem? And you know, if you had, didn't notice, by the way, too, my one walk and talk I did the other day, um, I actually was talking about this uh, currency and credit derivatives thing. 
on usdebtclock.org and it actually says in there about uh, I said it was 627 trillion and but if the picture I put up was 628 trillion you say well you messed up you just had a you forgot yourself no actually I, I said it the right way because see I'd seen it in the evening before I did the walk and talk the next morning and by the time I did the you know saw it went home slept got up in the morning did the walk and talk came to the office it had gone up another trillion <laughs> sure why not you know unpaid uh, debts and things like that just you know you have to um, I should have just you know checked it or something or whatever it's just insane up and over a trillion dollars um, in less than 24 hours and people just financing things all the time it's just insane um, this trail the Penobscot River trail system is owned by stockholders in New York. Did you know that? Found that out here recently. My wife was doing some research and she found it out and you know, what? And uh, why? Because you see there are people that gamble and they want to make everything a stock market uh, commodity and we want to just put our money over here and put our money over there. It's insane. And of course they want to encourage city people to come out here and hike this out here in the wilds of northern Maine and that little warming house guest house thing and whatever that we stopped at. I'll show you something here really quickly. I'll tell you about the there were people from the city at the warming house thing. About to show you some tracks here quick. Right there. Do you know what kind of tracks those are? Here's my foot beside it. Give you an idea how big the tracks are. So, if you know what kind of tracks those are, put it in the comment section. I'll give you a good hint. It's not my tracks, or my wife, or my son, or my dog, okay? There's a good hint for you. Um, <clears throat> but uh, put that in the comment section if you know what kind of track that is. But, um, this issue of debt, again, um, the borrower is servant to the lender, the Bible says. So, how does the Antichrist control the whole world? Unless it's through debt. Hmm. And the mark of the beast system is a worship of the beast in his image, but it's also connected with finance. Think about that. I know some of you might get a little tired of me, you know, you know, always railing on people that are in debt and whatever else, but I was in debt in the past. So I'm not being a nasty, mean, hypocrite or whatever else. No, I'm saying I got out of the bondage of debt years ago. And it's not because I have lots of money, it's because I made sacrifices to get out of debt. Very important. You see, in order to be free, you have to not be trackable, traceable. I didn't ask anybody's permission to come here this morning, except for the Lord. He watches over me. Um, if the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed, the Bible says in the book of John. Jesus Christ is the only one that can truly free you. You can be the most patriotic, uh, non-conformist, living out in the middle of nowhere, off-grid, whatever, and uh, if you don't have Jesus Christ, you're not free. And the Goonies can come at any time and take you down and hunt you down like an animal. You don't believe me? Look at the Ruby Ridge and what happened there in Idaho back many years ago. I guess it was in the 1990s sometime. I forget the exact year. Um, but uh, didn't have much protection because they didn't have Jesus Christ. They had some kind of Yeshua, Yahushua, or whatever and uh, heard Randy Weaver um, say he was involved in Ruby Ridge, if you don't know. It was his wife that was killed and his son by federal agents. Um, but I heard him interviewed the one time and he said that he thinks that God is a woman. <laughs> How'd that work out for you? You say, oh, you're making light of him losing his wife and his son. No, it was a terrible thing, it's a tragic thing. But what do you expect? Where's your protection? 
when you don't put your faith in Jesus Christ. Just pick up a King James Bible and read it. You read through the whole thing, you're never going to see God being a woman. You know, well, the Holy Spirit's a, it's a, the Shekinah glory. Where does it say Shekinah glory in there? It doesn't. Well, yes, but you have to go to the Hebrew and whatever to prove that you're smarter than the 54 men who spent seven years working on the King James Bible. Yeah, I don't think so. Again, that's another insult. But, uh, and I'll go to that one next. If your Bible just showed up in the last 60 years, um, you might want to look into manuscript evidence a little bit better and not say, well, Dr. John MacArthur said it's good. It's more accurate than the King James Bible. More accurate to what? <laughs> See, it's actually some truth to that. The new versions are more accurate to the garbage slop manuscripts, the minority, less than 1% of extant Greek manuscripts that are out there. Yes, they are more accurate to that garbage. Vaticanus, that I believe showed up in the 1500s, probably made by the Jesuits. Um, finding some really interesting stuff right now in my research about what the Jesuits had to say in the, in the uh, forward to the Reims New Testament um, about how that they are, you know, not everybody should have access to the Bible. Um, only certain people. And that salvation comes from the mouths of priests. I'll be showing some of that in the future. But um, I believe that Vaticanus... Um, is a compilation of a bunch of Gnostic type writings um, made into a book, a codex, in other words, Codex B is its official designation. And um, that's one of the two oldest and best manuscripts, which is a lie. It is not, they, they try to tell you that it's a, a fourth century manuscript and it's not. That's a lie. I've repeated that myself, unfortunately, but uh, it's not true. Um, there's no evidence that it goes, that it goes back that far. Um, the other one is Sinaiticus, or Sinaiticus, however you want to say it. Codex Aleph. And uh, that's where all the modern versions come from. And Codex Aleph, the Sinaiticus manuscript, again, there was a Greek Orthodox priest who wanted to merge some Gnostic type writings and things and some real heretical stuff that most people rejected and he wanted to merge that together and uh, create a manuscript and uh, introduce it to question the received text that the Greek Orthodox were you know, tasked to preserve and that's what he did and um, he did it through his nephew, I guess it was, a man named, another Greek monk named Constantine Simonides. And Simonides, if I'm pronouncing that correct, um, he made a rough draft and wrote it out on vellum. And he sent it to the monks at St. Catherine's Monastery on the Sinai Peninsula. And he sent it out there for them to kind of, you know, check it and make sure everything was good and then they would make this thing into an actual, you know, well-written manuscript because Simonides was a calligrapher and so he could, you know, write very well, but he just kind of did a sloppy job and and so a bunch of the monks, they got a hold of the Sinaiticus manuscript and they started to correct it. They'd cross things out, they'd erase things and whatever and they'd put in different readings and the whole plan got messed up. So Simonides abandoned his work, left the Sinaiticus manuscript there, and a um, Masonic devil named Constantine von Tischendorf showed up. You know, you can see him, he does the whole hand in the, you know, thing like that. And, um, and Tischendorf shows up and he finds this ancient codex and he comes up with this elaborate story and everything else. I'll be going in, into this in more detail in the future. But he, you know, oh, I found it in these dumb monks. They didn't know what they had. It was a fourth century manuscript and all this other stuff. No, it wasn't. It was not. And so Tischendorf takes this manuscript, or parts of it, he steals parts of it, cuts it out of the book, and takes it and, and he introduces it to the world as this great discovery. It takes him a number of years to get the, the rest of it. 
and now it's, you know, and for 150 something years, I think after that, nobody saw it. But everybody's using this as a way to, you know, they'll say Sinaiticus and Vaticanus um, are there and that that invalidates the Texas Receptus. So we have to, we found older manuscripts that contradict the King James. So we all have to rewrite the King James Bible and, you know, get rid of the King James Bible. And they've never even seen it. They've never even seen Sinaiticus in person. And uh, just here a number of years ago, uh, in the 21st century, it was finally digitized and put online. But before that, there were only a handful of scholars that had ever even seen this thing in person. So they abandoned the Bible without ever seeing the proof of why they should? Hmm. Sounds like an antichrist deception to me. Sounds like the kind of a thing that uh, people need to rethink. But you see, it's going to cost people a lot in order to go back on that. Because you have all the seminaries, all the modern churches, all the just millions of dollars that have been made from these new versions, all of that stuff. And if you come out now and say, hey, you know what, that was all fake, it was all corrupt, it was all wicked, uh, oh boy, you're gonna have to, you know, eat some serious crow, as they say. So, um, go on. Our son's up here on the uh, bridge taking some pictures. He's getting into photography. Um, chip off the old block, I guess. But again, if your Bible, where's the history of your Bible? Where was your Bible before 1611? Where was yours before 1881? <laughs> you know, before the revised version. Where was yours before, if you use an NIV, where was it before, what was it, uh, 1974? When they officially released it, in 1973 is when they got it done. I have a 1973. Uh, NIV New Testament. Um, the American Standard Version of 1901 came out. And then they came out with the New American Standard Version in the late 1960s. F. Dewey Lockman came out and bought the uh, rights to the New American Standard and um, came out and published it. It's kind of an issue. Give you some nice scenery here. Bridge is shaking a little bit. I don't want to make anybody seasick or anything. But, um, beautiful morning out here in northern Maine. So, but again, um, is your Bible version part of the Antichrist system? Hmm. Uh, it's kind of an interesting thing because the King James Bible says that the mark is in the right hand or in the forehead. And people for years, they questioned that. They said, oh, it can't be, it's you know the Greek. And they, they go to all this, the Greek stuff. It's an error in the King James Bible. It's an error, it's obviously an error. Because you can't have a mark in the right hand that would control buying or selling. That's nonsense. And so most of the new versions change it to on. Hmm. And all of a sudden, just in the last number of years, they came out with implantable microchips. And now you have all these people um, that are getting implantable microchips put inside of them in their hands, just like the Bible said would happen. So the oldest Bible that's in common usage, the oldest English Bible that's in common usage, um, it's, uh, it says the right thing. Hmm. And yet the new versions that go back to the Vatican and the corrupt Orthodox Church, uh, they have it wrong. Interesting. So we're kind of getting off the original intent of the video here, brother. We're talking about people having sleeping trouble. Well, why do you think we're having sleeping trouble? Why? I would say it's because uh, the spiritual realm is going rather nutty. I think if that's the case, And um, we're feeling things. I mean, you can feel stuff. You can feel some really weird things happening. And um, I'm gonna go over here and climb up this hill. Kind of a neat area. All these pine needles here, it's like a big carpet in underneath these pine trees. There's a little picnic area here. And um, little campfire thing there, right there. 
see if I can go up here and break my neck or something. Um, it's a little bit slippery out here this morning, so we'll see how this works. Try to get up here one-handed. Only one hand to grab on, but not too bad. But, um, so, you know, what's going on? Uh, I don't know, brethren. I really don't know. It's something that is very bothersome to me. I wish I had some better advice. I wish I could just say, well, it's magnesium or it's uh, vitamin D or it's vitamin whatever. Um, I'm in pretty good shape, pretty good health for an old geezer like me, you know. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'm not in too bad a shape. And yet, I just wake up for no reason. And a lot of you are having the same problem. It's really kind of odd. And I don't know how to advise people. Pray, certainly. You know, read your King James Bibles. And have audio King James Bible playing. Try everything. Uh, you know, again, the whole point of us as Christians being here on the earth is that we're supposed to hinder the Antichrist system. That's our job. He who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Um, there's a nice spot here. Show you way down there. Down the river. Bunch of waterfalls and everything down there. But, um, hinder things. Well, uh, that means if you are hindering the Antichrist system, if you're saying, uh, no, not taking anything in the shoulder, don't really need a smartphone, no thank you. Uh, new versions, no. Uh, modern Christianity, not for me, no thank you. Um, if you are doing that, you're going to get some pushback from the devil. You will. And, um, you know, the devil has lots of plans. I can tell you that. Uh, there have been many times that uh, I've learned about something that, that the devil wanted to do, and I fight it. And I fight it hard, and the Lord gives me victory over it. And I've seen that. The thing of Wolfton. They wanted to come to this beautiful area up here, northern Maine, and destroy all of this. Have bright lights and explosions going off and, you know, let's destroy a mountain so that we can save the environment with our electronics. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? Let me show you down here. Some waterfalls and things, some white water rapids. Very pretty. That, down there, not me. I'm not very pretty. <laughs> But brethren, uh, you're going to get spiritual attacks and you'll attack the devil. Sometimes you'll get a chance to witness to somebody at work or witness to a family member and have a really good conversation. And all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, boom, you wake up, middle of the night. Why can't I sleep? What's going on? I don't know what's happening. I feel just really weird. Something's going on. We'll have that happen. Um, all sorts of things can happen to you. Just out of the blue, things can occur. And you know, some of that stuff, uh, the Bible says that the, in, I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where Paul says about he has a thorn in the flesh and he besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from him. And the Lord says to him, my grace is sufficient for thee. You know, my strength is made perfect in weakness. <laughs> That's one of those verses I don't like. Come on, Lord, clear it up for me. I'm not feeling so good here, Lord. Please take care of this for me, Lord. Please. Lord says, you'll be all right. I promised my wife and my son that I would go out hiking this morning. And I got about three hours of sleep last night. Three, maybe four hours of sleep, and it was not good sleep. And I woke up this morning and just... <sighs> had a lot of time to pray. That was the one good thing. But I um, woke up and I thought... My wife said, so we're not going to go hiking then? I said, no, we're going hiking. 
let's get up. Let's go hike for a few miles. Lord will give me strength. And you know what? I feel pretty good right now. It's uh, 20 minutes to 8 o'clock. You can see that. And um, oh, that's right. I, you know, I'm showing. I have. I'm such an old, old timer here. I have a analog watch. Yeah, I do. I like analog. But <laughs> I'll just go off on my old time ways here. Put other people down that don't have the exact same beliefs or something like this. No, I'm just trying to make you think. That's what I do here. I'm not judging people. Oh, you judge yourself. I put out what works for me. I put out the truths of scripture and you compare your life to it. And you say, yeah, he's given me some interesting things to think about. You know what, maybe I'm gonna take a hike and not take myself in. Maybe I'll check into this thing of this uh, sitting Atticus being fake and the King James Bible being real. King James Bible being the best Bible ever in history. Maybe I'll check into that. Maybe I'll get a King James Bible and read it. Ah, sweat's getting in my eyes. Maybe I'll uh, get out of my comfort zone a little bit and go out and hike around in a place like that if I can get to one. Maybe take a va vacation. Instead of going to the ocean and sitting there with barely any clothes on out there and watching a bunch of other people with barely any clothes on. Um, no thank you. I think I'd rather have uh, some time out here in God's creation and enjoy myself out here. So, uh, well, I guess that's going to be it. I could keep ranting the whole way back to the vehicle, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm just not sure where they went to. I'll have to find them. But um, uh, hopefully you enjoyed the little walk and talk here this morning. And hopefully I've, I've challenged you. And hopefully it's a little bit of a comfort as well to know that you're not alone and that there are others that are also struggling with the thing of, you know, just waking up for no reason at all, not being able to go back to sleep. The Lord can give you strength. The Lord can get you through it. Remember, Christian, um, when you're saved, the only suffering that you'll ever experience is here, physically. Um, the suffering that will come in heaven will be, you'll suffer loss at the judgment seat of Christ, but you aren't going to suffer physically. Um, you won't burn like the Catholics teach. Oh, you have to go through purgatory and be burned for a while so that you can be purified. <laughs> no, uh, that doesn't work. Okay, there's there for now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Okay, Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Um, who walk not after the flesh, but are, you know, after the spirit there. Um, he said, well, see, if you walk after the flesh, then you'll burn for a while. Uh, there's a, some nut out there, some Catholic that tries to teach that Christians that uh, suffer, or that didn't suffer in this life, they have to be in hell for the thousand year millennial kingdom. So part of Christ is ruling and reigning on the earth. Part of Christ is in hell burning with the other lost people. Okay, a little bit nuts. And this guy, you know, he likes to refer to church fathers and whatever else. Um, yeah, I don't trust anybody that refers to church fathers. Profess to be a Christian and you refer to them. I don't think so. So, but anyhow, I'm going to head back to the vehicle now and get to the office. Get some things done besides going out and enjoying ourselves out here taking a walk. So, but uh, stay by the word, brethren. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You miss some sleep, then you just pray and say, okay, Lord, give me strength for the day. Help me to have a better night tonight. And um, let's pray for the destruction of the wicked system that we are currently under. And not that God would prop it up and whatever else. Make America great again, you know. Why? Uh, what would happen if it did become prosperous and whatever again? Would the people turn to the Lord? No. Uh, people need to be broken. And uh, so that will be it. See you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.